list to order. Uh, I'm George Sheets, a recently appointed chairman. Ken is the vice chair. And what we'll do is have the new members on this, on this commission introduce themselves so we can get their names pronounced correct, quick, uh, correctly from the very start. <clears throat> so we'll start over here with Mel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Mel Roop. And uh, it's an honor to be here to represent the people of Prescott, Arizona. And thank you very much for the opportunity. And I want to thank the staff, too, for the great work they're doing. Well, how long have you lived in Prescott? And just a sentence on your background. Uh, quickly, uh, I've lived in Prescott since December 1st. Uh, we recently bought a home in Prescott. And we're in the process of emptying our garage and getting all that stuff in the house, which is a big job. But luckily, I was able to find time to review the agenda. My background is on both sides, uh, public and private sector. I spent a lot of time in planning commission meetings, but not as a commissioner, mainly either as staff support or as a representative for developers going for uh, entitlements and that sort of thing. Okay, Jared. I'm Jared Nanke. You've been on this for a while, but you can give us a, a brief while. one. Um, sure, yeah. I'm uh, born and raised in Prescott, Arizona. Um, I, my background is in uh, construction. I'm co-owner of a construction architectural firm here in Prescott. Yep, thank you. Ken? Uh, I'm Ken Maberek. I've been in real estate all my life. Um, commercial real estate, primarily. We're uh, doing a couple projects here in, in Prescott. Been around this town for 36 years, off and on, uh, and just very, very proud to be on the Planning Commission. Okay, uh, George, let's go with George over here. Yes, my name is George Lee, and I am also proud to be here and consider myself very fortunate for being allowed to be here. My background is real estate development, and I've been doing that since the late 70s. I did a lot of office buildings in Phoenix, and then I've done some projects up here. Okay, thank you. Terry Marshall moved up from the Valley uh, about 14 years ago, been in commercial real estate on one side or the other since uh, 1967. Uh, and George and I worked together in uh, uh, Phoenix for many years, probably since the 70s. So uh, I've been on, gosh, I don't know, some two terms now, I guess. So I'm happy to be here to help out. Yeah, uh, I'm George Sheets, and I did a lot of industrial automation, a lot of working for big uh, international companies where we had projects, you know, like Honeywell and do doing refineries overseas and different kinds of automation and and uh, projects. So I come from that heavy industry construction type background. Okay, um, we have the minutes here. Um, I believe there's, what, three sets, so do we have to approve each one individually? Can we do all three at, at the same time? We do them individually. Okay. Okay, does anyone want to make a motion to approve the January 11th? I so move. Need Second. A, okay. All in favor? Aye. Raise your right hand, okay. If I can abstain, Mr. Chairman, since I wasn't at the meeting, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I forgot to welcome Jim Lamerson, our famed uh, councilman that's been with this group. How long have you been with this planning and zoning as a liaison? Almost somewhere in the city, 14 years. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're in the other code and those kinds of committees too, so you kind of know what how, what got us here to this point on the, some of the decisions we make. Okay, um, February 22nd minutes, motion? I make a motion, we approve them. I second that. Okay, all in favor, right hand, say aye. Aye. Stain. Okay, uh, March 15th minutes, uh, a motion for approval? A motion it, motion for approval. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor, raise your right hand, say aye. Aye. Okay, Stain. good, everything passed. Thank you, Darla, for doing such a good job. <laughs> All right, uh, the first item, uh, uh, Cortez Street Apartments site plan for 28 additional apartments and expansion of an existing 
apartment complex. So, okay, go ahead and introduce yourself as a planner. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, I'm Katie Peterson, the community planner with Community Development Department, Planning and Zoning. And um, there are two agenda items I'll be presenting this morning. Welcome to the new commissioners, too. Okay, so um, this is the site plan review for uh, 602 South Cortez Street. I'll give us a, just a quick overview. I'll go through a summary, uh, review the site and location, an overview of the project, and uh, then I'll go through the, uh, the key site plan review criteria that apply to this uh, particular project. These are two adjacent lots, um, a shared loop driveway through the site. There are no changes uh, to the multiple family buildings on the developed lot. The proposed development is for new multifamily buildings, parking, and the paved driveway on the vacant lot. Uh, the site is uh, just up the street. The western parcel is the one that's undeveloped currently. There are some existing pads there from uh, previous partial construction. Uh, those will be removed uh, for the new construction. The east lot is the one that's already developed with multifamily buildings, uh, paved driveway, um, and parking existing. So there will be no changes to that eastern site. Uh, this is the existing zoning. There's no proposed change to the existing zoning. So the, the developed parcel is business general where uh, the existing multifamily is allowed by right. On the west, it's multifamily high density zoned. And um, just looking at, this is a, a close up of the site plan to give an idea of the layout. So on the, on the east again, there are existing buildings, so we're not addressing that portion of the site. There are no proposed changes. This proposal is for development on, on the western parcel where you see the, the black blocks represent the locations of buildings and new proposed parking. So you can see in the photos um, in the lower left, the proposed development areas there on the right. Currently that driveway is unpaved, so they'll be paving that as part of the development to connect to the, the loop drive. Um, the access is off of Cortez. And you can see the, the driveway loops around uh, the inner periphery of the site. Um, so the exist existing on the east, there are nine buildings, 28 units, um, parking, paved driveway, ingress and egress from South Cortez Street. That's all remaining the same. On the west, the existing partial construction will be removed. There's some stem walls and pads there um, from previous years, so those will be demolished for the new development. Um, thank you, Darla. I think that's 28 units, isn't it? I mean, 38 rather than 28? It's um, 28 units. Well, there's 66 all together, so. So the new one's 38. Just a moment, I'll check. It says on top that it's six new buildings and ex it, it, the existing is 30. 38. Yeah. Existing is 30. I know that. 38, yeah. Existing is 38, proposed is 28. There was an initial proposal for a few more units that are what, propo what are proposed, and it was reduced to accommodate all of the new parking on that western parcel for all that new construction. So um, the new will be six buildings containing those 28 units, uh, parking, and again, the paved driveway through the site. So you'll see um, access to the site is, is off of um, Cortez, 
and the driveway loops around through the site like this. So this portion is unpaved. This portion is unpaved. That'll be paved. So it'll be a loop through with access to all the parking. There's some garage parking, some covered parking, some uncovered parking, and some garage parking. <clears throat> uh, just as background regarding water services, um, this project qualifies for water efficient allocations where water services department um, is addressing this portion of it. On February 6th, 2018, the Water Issues Committee of City Council uh, recommended allocation of water for this project. And just to go through the site plan review criteria, um, section 9.8.5B, which addresses building lot setback requirements from the Land Development Code. Under the multifamily high density zone, uh, regarding setbacks, this project does meet the setback requirements, 20 feet in the front and rear, 7 feet on the sides. I believe the site plan shows a 15-foot front setback uh, as a marker, but the building is, is actually set back uh, the minimum of 20 feet. It also complies with the 50% maximum lot coverage requirement. The proposal is for two stories with a 35-foot maximum height, which will be verified at the time of uh, building permit submittals. And it is actually below the maximum density allowed. It's a 2.96-acre parcel. Uh, they're allowed 77 units. They're only proposing 28 units. And uh, the general development standards that they would need to comply with that are relevant to this Site plan review are the 76 new parking spaces. This includes eight ADA accessible spaces above the required three. There are other uh, site plan review criteria that we'll will, will review at the time of building permit submittal. All the departments uh, that will be involved in, in those reviews reviewed the site plan and they all approved it for coming to Planning and Zoning Commission. We'll get into the details of reviewing, the more detailed review at, at the time of building permit submittal. Um, but just to go over it quickly, 9.8.5F, internal circulation, public and private emergency, and uh, 9.8.5M, public road and street access. Uh, this project meets the site access requirements. It has a circle driveway through the site, as I mentioned. Access is from Cortez, 9.8.5K, parking and maneuvering, and 9.8.5L, parking lot screening. Uh, they're proposing 76 new parking spaces within the interior of the lot, and the Circle Drive provides access to all the parking spaces. Uh, other site plan review criteria sections that I didn't detail in the presentation uh, they are uh, mentioned in the, in the staff memo, uh, but site plan has been reviewed by staff, and those additional details will be reviewed at the time of um, when they submit for building permits. Um, those are issues like landscaping, grading, drainage, public utilities, landscaping, and lighting. And I have some other details if we'd like to go back to them, if there are questions about how we calculated the density and parking requirements. Um, I can answer any questions at this time, or if you um, have questions for the applicant, I believe. Yeah, they're here also. Okay, okay we'll take uh, questions from ask, the ask commissioners questions. now. A okay. couple of quick ones. Uh, is the roadway wide enough to provide on-street parking, if need be, or is it too narrow for fire access? On-street parking? Street, yeah. uh, well, the, the code requires off-street parking, um, so we calculate it based on the number of bedrooms and the type of use. Uh, so they've, they've uh, met the requirement of our land development code of uh, the number of parking spaces that need to be provided on-site, off-street. So there is a requirement for that. On the street, outside of the site, um, you mean off-site, not in the, the driveway? Uh, the circular. Uh, oh, in the circular driveway. Um, I believe the parking is required to be off of that driveway, would need to remain clear for, 
for access. Okay, thanks. And uh, another question I had. Um, and excuse, some of my questions might sound dumb, but I'm trying to learn all this. Uh, is it required that they submit uh, landscape, landscaping areas as part of this submittal? Uh, the other applicant this morning I noticed had landscaped areas shown on their site plan. Is that yes. a requirement or not a Yes, at the time that they submit for building permit review, uh, planning staff and building staff will be looking at um, the landscape plan, so they'll need to submit a full landscape plan at that time. And we have a recommended plant list uh, referenced in the land development code. So we'll be checking for the minimum requirements for um, spacing types of plants and percentage of planted area. They have existing landscaping on site too, trees and um, mostly on the developed side. So we'll be looking at those details and making sure to make those requirements before approval. Okay, thanks. That's all. I do, naturally. Uh, this is a project that's been bouncing around our town for a couple of decades. I was very familiar with the existing building, uh, having been in, in that business for many, many years. And then a number of years ago, as you saw, they, they built the, the pads to, to move ahead. And then, as I understand it, they had some, as often as the case, a few partnership problems. And uh, I understand they finally resolved that so this can move ahead. I think it's a very necessary project. For years, that the Cortez Circle Apartments were where people who work downtown could affordably live, and they actually walk to work, so didn't even need parking downtown for them. So it's a great location. It's nice to have that, to have the uh, <clears throat> the, the people that, the person that took it over uh, want to go ahead and, and develop that remaining west side of it. It's, it's kind of looked like an eyesore uh, at the end of a, one of our major downtown streets. So I'm pleased to see this thing. I don't have a great uh, issue with it. I just have some clarifications, Katie, and I hope this doesn't, uh, I just, I'm a little confused on how you came up with the parking. Okay. Uh, and, and normally I'm not that concerned with parking. I figured you guys got it, but I, I, I know we had a change in the code not too long ago where we had to add a half a space per unit. I don't know when that came in, but that wasn't, uh, that's fairly recent, I think. But out of, out of 30, run through the parking. Okay. <laughs> it just didn't add up for me. Right. So we have, uh, they're proposing 76 new parking spaces. 34 single car garage, 42 uncovered spaces. The requirement by land development code is um, for two and three bedroom units, they require one space per bedroom plus half a space per unit. So it's 22 bedroom units and six, 22 two bedroom units and six three bedroom units um, with one space per bedroom and half a space per unit. So that adds up to, to um, the 76. Okay, I guess it does. I'm yeah. question. I just think it's a great project. There didn't seem to be anything in here that I had a big issue with at all. I think the height is certainly commensurate with downtown and certainly falls within the zoning. So I'd like to hear from the applicant at some point, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think this is a great little project for downtown. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll go with George. Uh, Katie, would you go back to the um, comment that you made or m did not make on site screening? It was up there that it was oh, to see. be it was to be discussed, but you didn't mention it. Was it uh, parking screening? Just it just said site screening, and I I don't do you have site screening? Well, it's specifically what uh, we require screening for would be the parking areas. So part of what we look at is if they're visible from the street, if, if uh, parking lots, uncovered parking needs to be screened. All of this parking is located on the interior of the lot, so the buildings are along the exterior. So I understand that site screening has been applied here. Correct. Are there any specific site screening requirements for the project as a whole? Uh, we, we do have for parking areas. Then I misread it. Thank you. Uh, Katie, I had the same question that Ken had regarding parking, but one step farther. Can you point out on the map 
where the ADA parking spaces are at in relationship to each of the units? Yes. I can't see them on here, but let me see if I can find a site plan. The site plan up. was pretty busy, and unfortunately, yeah. I got two packages of uh, the Valley Street and not one for this project. It's hard to see here. I'll see if I have a big site plan I can put on the overhead projector, but they're, um, some of them are in pairs. So there's some here, I believe, here. I'll have to pull up the site plan to see where the other ones are. Just a moment. here <laughs> so here are two spaces this is um, the top of the site Cortez Street there are two here there are another three here Question really Another three was, here. Are they in the proximity of each unit? That's what. We're oh, I see. And they have they have distributed them along um, sort of throughout that side of the site. So there's some at the at the top here, and then driving down the driveway, another three, and then more at this end of the site. So they've distributed them out sort of equally along that side of the site where the new development will occur. So one step further, is there a requirement that there are ADA parking spaces in front of each unit that can they be spread out over the site? Actually, I'm not sure about that. May I answer that, please? Yeah, come on. Uh, Please state your name. Um, yes, Commissioners, I'm Stan Hitson, and I'm with Michael Taylor Architects at 118 South Pleasant Street, and I thank you for your consideration. Uh, fair housing standards require adaptable units. These are two-story apartment buildings, and in this case, not every ground floor unit has to be adaptable because there are formulas that are applied based on the slopes, and if you look at the contours on this site, this is a fairly hilly slope. And so you take, you take a percentage of the, the lot, which is over a 10% grade and of compared to the entire lot surface, and then that is multiplied times your ground floor units. That then determines how many of the ground floor units need to be made adaptable. And so we provided handicap parking for each of the units, and you'll notice in building B, we've provided three adaptable units. And, and uh, so that's where that formula comes from. It's, it's a, there's a requirement for, if it were a flat lot, then fair housing standards would say, well, you need to build every unit so that it, it's adaptable for, for handicap access. In this case, because of the aggressive slopes on this site in places, not every unit is. So we have provided the, the ADA compliant slopes for sidewalks to the entries of these units on the ground floor, and we provided ADA parking where the adaptable units are located. Uh, another question, is there any elevators involved in this project? There are no elevators. <clears throat> Stan, could you tell us and maybe the people at home what adaptable units mean? Adaptable means that when the apartment unit is built initially, it does not have to comply with uh, ADA standards, but the, the spaces around plumbing fixtures access to things like laundry facilities and kitchen facilities inside the building, blocking needs to be put in the walls for grab bars and, and appliances that would, that would serve the, uh, the handicapped community. And so that any of these units could be 
based on the lease requirements of the property owner and leasing these apartments could be adapted to serve handicapped needs. I've ever heard that term. No, it's, <laughs> it's a way to make the building of apartments a lot more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's all written into the ANSI standards, the fair housing, the, the HUD standards for adaptability. And um, yes, sir. Well, it, if um, all the regular units are not ADA or rented out and there's not any ADA requirement uh, possible renter coming forward then would would those be rented to just the normal normal uh, people sure it could be yes and, and, and an apartment mean you and a, actually use them in, in an apartment complex there's, there's no way to know who's going to walk in and want to lease this apartment codes codes dictate that you have to be able to accommodate a certain number of, of, of handicapped persons and so thus the adaptability laws came into place so you, if somebody comes in that's, that does have handicapped needs, then you can adapt the apartments for them and they can, they can lease. So. Well, even for, for people like me that's not handicapped, I like the hotel rooms with the grab bars and mm -hmm. you know, the, the bigger showers and the things like that. It's kind of... We don't need to go there, do we? Mm -hmm. we, don't need to go there, do we? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, Ken? <laughs> Well, uh, again, again, uh, I'm going to withhold a comment. <laughs> again, <laughs> adaptability, this, adaptability means that the, all the toilet room sizes, the shower sizes, access to the laundry facilities, to kitchen facilities, in terms of all the access, doorways, maneuvering spaces, all have to be there. You just, the, about the only difference is you don't necessarily, let's say in, in a laundry facility, you might have a bifold door for, uh, for the average tenant. In a handicap situation, you have to, a wheelchair has to have a side access to laundry facilities, so you would remove the bifold door, you would add the grab bars, and any of those kind of things that might impede access by a handicapped person, the, the apartment gets adapted to that use. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Any uh, other questions? For yeah. Well, what, you know, the things I notice, which are more public works type things, and one is with the, the changes, the topographic of that site, it looks like drainage is going to be something that will have to really be looked at, and probably water, re, water detention of some kind. You'll have to have some space on the site plan for that. Uh, and the, uh, the other is a question about the Cortez kind of bends around there, but is that going to be a private drive? Uh, the road going around there that's going to be paved, or is that going to be? Uh, it will not be a dedicated owned. street, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. It will not be a dedicated yeah. city street. So then it, it can't be named Cortez, can it? It's called Cortez Circle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there are there are a number of uh, again. This project was actually permitted, and construction was began in 2007. So there were complete civil engineered grading and drainage plans and there are a number of detention elements and all of that was, was has already been engineered and put into place and we're actually only changing the locations of two of the buildings with the new site plan to accommodate the parking most everything else is is resting exactly where it was in the original design where permitting was approved for this project so it, it has it hasn't and and we just needed to for, somehow in 2007 the project got approved with some of the parking for these new units on the existing site and i think it was because it was a single owner and perhaps development codes have changed since that time in the last 11 years mm -hmm. so now the requirement and and also the desire of the owner is to make sure that the two separate parcels each have their own parking because she has two adult children that someday she hopes to vest ownership of these apartment complex too and she wants them to be able to be treated as separate parcels with all the parking and all the units and everything on, on that on one part on their parcels mm -hmm. okay any other questions from the commissioners is there anyone in the public out here that would like to ask any questions you know doug you don't have any and yeah you got your project okay um i guess um yeah well, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to make a couple comments on the project, if I could. Um, I evaluated the material provided by staff, which I think was thorough and very good and clear. Thank you very much. Um, I'm evaluating site plans generally, I do it on two levels. The first is the bigger picture. Uh, site plans basically are an, an arrangement of uses on the site. 
or not to look at architecture or colors and any of that stuff. So in the big picture, you look at the whole site and the constraints and the opportunities and uh, impacts on the city and the neighbors and so forth. And I think this project fares very well. I'd like to comment the, compliment the uh, applicant and the architect on the uh, way they've developed what I think is a kind of a difficult site because of the long and narrow nature of it. Uh, specifically, the uh, buildings themselves, uh, rather than uh, they could have had two or three large buildings and they could have had uh, a couple of large parking places, but they chose to have more site-specific and friendly uh, building arrangements and uh, variations in the setbacks and so forth. And I think they did a very good job of that. Uh, so I think overall the project is a positive impact on the on the city. Okay. Does, does anyone else have a more of a summary type statement like that in terms of what they th think overall about the project? Okay. Okay. Seeing none. Um, the uh, there is always a motion that is prepared ahead of time that is on the back of the council or the memo to P and Z the community development memo. Um, it's under recommended action, so do we have uh, someone wanting to make that motion? I'll make that motion, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, but first I want to ask George or Katie, you might know, what's PLN stand for? Plan? Site plan? Is that what, is that a new yeah. oh, term PLN. for us? Right, it used to be ESI. So with the new tracking system, it's the reference number for the... So the PLN project. means it's a site plan? Okay, thank you. Uh, I move to recommend approval of site plan review PLN 17-0001 uh, uh, for the Cortez Street Circle site plan at 602 South Cortez. Okay, uh, second? I'll second it. Okay, second. Uh, any further discussion? Any other final discussions now that we've got a motion? Okay, all in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. 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 Okay, passes. 6-0. All right. Uh, the next item is the apartment units up on, on Valley Street. So, Katie. Um, so, this other project is uh, located at the current address, 852 and 858 Valley Street. Uh, the lots have been combined. Uh, a new address will be assigned. And again, I'll give a summary site and location overview and review the site plan review criteria from the Land Development Code. Uh, this project is um, over near the Safeway um, on Valley Street, southwest of Whipple, east of Gale Gardner. And looking at the zoning, uh, multifamily medium is the zone. There's no proposed change to the zoning. Here's a photo of the site, the view from Valley Street. So this is the view west. There's some existing structures there, uh, which will be removed. Um, the site plan, I'll, I'll also show a, a rendering that explains the two to three story um, design of the building. And the applicant is also here if, if there are further questions about some of those details. Um, so this is the site plan, it's one one building, two bedroom units. The proposal is for 14 units uh, with parking on site. So there used to be two, two parcels, approximately where the dividing line is between the parking and the building. Those have been combined. And uh, just the summary of the site, you can see at the top two stories on the, on the left and toward the right, and in the center of the building there are two units which are on the third floor. It's a 0.69 acre site. The proposal is for one multifamily residential building, which would be uh, 30,334 square feet, two to three stories, 14 two bedroom units, and uh, 36 parking spaces, including one ADA accessible space. Um, this rendering shows how the two to three bedroom design works. So it's two stories on each end of the building and in the center there's a third floor. So that accommodates the two additional units, 12 units um, throughout the building and then 
to additional units on that third floor in the center uh, with parking in front. Um, reviewing the water services, um, water services department uh, took this to city council, uh, city council's uh, water issues committee on December 5th, 2017. Uh, city council recommended allocation of water. Uh, their water supply is from a combination of current and committed groundwater from existing use and alternative water supplies. And uh, looking at the site plan review criteria, uh, building lot and setback requirements in the multifamily medium density zone, the setbacks are the same as the last project we looked at. Uh, 20 feet in the front and rear, seven feet on the sides. Uh, also 50% maximum lot coverage, which they comply with. The proposed two to three stories uh, have a maximum 35 foot height, which would be allowed by code and that will verify at the time of building permit applications. Maximum density allowed uh, for the 0.69 acre parcel would be 13.37 units. They're proposing 14 units. And uh, the general development standards, um, parking, looking at parking, they are proposing 36 parking spaces, which meets their requirement. And uh, again, that includes the one ADA accessible space. Uh, regarding the other site plan review criteria, um, it does meet site access requirements. It proposes a 25 foot wide driveway through the site with access from Valley Street with parking and maneuvering. Um, parking lot screening is the section of the code um, that's part of site plan review criteria. So they, they are proposing 36 parking spaces and driveway access to parking. Their site plan shows some landscaping. Again, we'll require a full landscape plan at the time of um, building permit application submittal. So we'll look more closely at their parking and parking lot screening at the time that they submit that full landscape plan. So we'll look at the requirements in the code for screening the parking area. And the others, again, site plan review by, uh, the site plan has been reviewed by staff from the various departments that will also uh, review at the time of building permit application submittal. Um, so we'll verify at that time further the, the details of landscaping, grading, drainage, public utilities, landscaping, and outdoor lighting for compliance with, with the various codes. And then again, I have some of the details if, if you need to look at. Um, we always check the math on the requirements for density and parking. So I, I can answer questions. This one's a little not as um, complex of a site as the previous one. So I went into a little more detail on that last one. This one is just one building with, with parking. Okay. Uh, commissioners, you got something, Mel? I just. Just wanted to add, I think it's the layout and the plan they've done and where they've got the landscape screening and so forth. I think it's sensitive to the site. That's limited because of the proportions and size of the site, but I think they've done a good job of uh, laying it out and uh, not impacting the neighbors and, in fact, improving the neighborhood, I think. No questions. Thank you. Ken? I don't really, I don't have any questions. I think it's, a, it's the neighborhood... Um, gets revitalized with buildings like this. I, you know, I think we're cramming a lot of apartments on that little site, this 27,000 square feet or whatever the number is. But I don't, <clears throat> that's not what we're here for, uh, I don't think, for that type of detail. I think the project meets um, what I would like to see happen in that neighborhood. It's a good neighborhood. I don't know what the rents will be, but hopefully they'll be um, at the lower, <clears throat> excuse me, the lower end of market. Uh, it's good location, great for our town, and nice to see in that, in that particular area. Although a little dense. <laughs> okay, George. No. Uh, I got one comment. First of all, I think it's a great project for that area, but I'm a little bit sensitive since I spent most of my career at Fry's Food Stores. That's not a safe. Oh, Katie. Katie gets a note for saying Safeway out loud. <laughs> you didn't know they bought that. 
when I went by it the other day, it was still a prize. <laughs> Katie's powerful. <laughs> Uh, Katie, on what is the zoning code when you, when you can have a 40 foot apartment complex? I, I did. I thought this was probably 40 instead of 35, even though you're within 35, so it's not an issue. But I have to check that one. I think it's is it business? <coughs> you know, whereas. You know, like along Gurley, you can even have a 50, 50 foot, and any more than that, you have the special use permit. But downtown. Hmm? Yeah, downtown. Gurley downtown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is multifamily medium. Right. This one is multifamily medium. I think it's 35 to 40. You know, this is kind of for more for for re-educating us because we forget when we sleep at night most of the details, and, or is it something related? I didn't sleep, but <laughs> yeah. well, maximum building structure height thirty-five feet. This is the the multifamily medium section. So multifamily high lets you go up. Oh. It goes to 40 at high. Yeah. That's, that's what he's asking. Yeah. Well, it's high. Uh, it's high. It's 40 feet. Yeah. You were asking. I see. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. It's somewhat, you know, you wonder about some of it. If we're a bit arbitrary on some of these. But no. No. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, I see Doug, Doug Stroh's out here, and we haven't seen him since the Preservation Commission that is on for years, so do you have something you'd like to say about this? Good morning, Commissioners. I'm uh, Doug Stroh with Stroh Architecture. I live at 1937 Rocky Dells Drive. Um, I agree with some of the comments that the uh, Commissioners have made. I think it's a nice little infill project. Um, we wanted to have uh, give it a little bit more of an upscale look. It's going to be continue to become a very nice walkable neighborhood with the uh, the new Safeway store coming in. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, and we do have a, a true value store right there, and of course perhaps a uh, a mixed use project where Miller Valley School was. So I think it's um, kind of an up and coming little area, and uh, I think it works very well for the neighborhood. Any commissioners, any questions for Doug? Uh, having very little to do with what's directly in front of us, but where all that? Why is all that dirt there? Where the dirt come from? And why is it there? Both. <laughs> Two questions. The dirt came from the 21-unit apartment complex that is on 621st Street. We had excess dirt on that site. That's another project that we did, and um, so. The dirt has been moved down here because the back end, the west end of this project, is about a foot into the uh, flood plain. And so we're going to be using that to uh, build up the site. And uh, it should be balanced with that dirt that you see on the site. So that western end is in the flood plain? Uh, just, I think, the last 40 or 50 feet, but the civil engineer has, you know, addressed that. It's only about, like I said, about a foot deep back there, and the the the, uh, the pad is, I think, about a foot and a half, two feet above the uh, existing. I'm trying to sound like half a press. It's going to be underwater at some point here. According to the maps, you're correct. <laughs> how how wide uh, how wide is that floodplain in the back? I do think. You have, it, a, do you have a sense of that? I don't see it on any of your documents, though. Yeah, it's actually on the civil engineering construction documents, but it, it comes into uh, uh, probably a little past the westernmost uh, apartment units. Your, uh, I'd say like the back 25%. Units? Pardon me? You say the western half of your proposed units? The, the two westernmost most units are in the uh, floodplain. Probably about where that handicapped parking space is. 
Mm -hmm. It's about as far as it comes, so it's minimal impact on this site. And do we have? Do we know how far that, uh, Katie? Do we know how far that floodplain exists to the west of this site? I'm not sure. Jason at property. This Everything to the west is in that floodplain. That little teeny tiny creek that comes through there. That's what Miller Creek up down to. The um, there. is it Miller? Miller. No, it's not Miller. I I don't know that it has a name. I guess it goes all the way to Sunset. George just informed us. So. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Again, are there any other comments or questions? Uh, uh, do we have any member of the public, or is the other gentleman back here with you? It's just the owner. Yeah. Oh, you're the you're the owner. Okay. You're Virgil. Yes. Yeah, you're Virgil. Why don't you come up and introduce yourself since you got. All these projects going around. Mm -hmm. I'm Virgil Dorfler. Oh. Oh. <laughs> With Pasadena Corporation. Uh, I've been building here for 20 years. And I also uh, built a lot, a lot of apartments in Minneapolis, St. Paul. About two, three thousand of them. And um, that was my main field, is building apartments. When I got over here, uh, I did Boulder Park which uh, uh, that really made that in the town. Uh, Walmart came to me many times while I was doing that because it was so much rock. Uh, we, we had two dynamite people, dyna, dynamite. I made a mistake buying it. <laughs> but it came out perfect. And uh, that's about it, but I have a lot of experience building apartments. Well, thanks for coming to Prescott and investing in our community. For me? you have any questions, for commissioners? For No, but I'd just like to make a comment. I think the, uh, the rendering that Katie showed really perks up that neighborhood mm -hmm. with the oh, design yeah, and so on really and so nice. forth. Yeah, that was really nice. That, I like that design. Yeah. Doug, you probably get some credit for that, don't you? That's a good A job. little bit, yes, yeah. <laughs> Flood plane, one foot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you get the, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Okay, uh, do we have a motion? Again, if the motion is already written down on the back of this page. It's I'll make the motion. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I move to approve, recommend approval of site plan number 18 uh, quadruple zero three for Valley Street site plan and the address I understand is going to, to come. What, what was that number? That the address will to come, will be to come. We don't oh, have okay. an address. Okay, it was 17-006. Right, but got, she's changing it. Yeah, okay. That's a different number. Would you like the, the, the parcel number? There is a parcel number that's well, been assigned. Just, no, no, just the plan. Uh, my motion is fine with, with just the site plan for 18-00003 uh, for Valley Street. I was just saying that it's not the address on here. You're going to have a new address on it. Right. They'll, they'll need to, uh, the applicant will need to uh, request a specific address for the site. And so the different number. But oh, is it? Which, which number? Is it 17? Wow, we got. Bunches of different numbers, guys. Three. Okay, okay. so he's got the, you got the right one. So, so the motion is as stated. Yeah. Okay. Got a second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes. All right. Um, as far as. Um, some announcements or other items of interest on the agenda. Do you development have anything for us? Yes, sir, I do. Um, my name is George Worley. I'm the planning manager for the city. A uh, couple of things just to catch you up and to make some uh, offer of additional information whenever you need it. So first, you'll each be getting a new copy of the land development code. Um, we periodically replace pages, but at some point it's better just to replace the entire book, so you'll be getting a new book. You'll also be getting a new copy of the uh, adopted general plan, that's the 2015 general plan, so you'll have that uh, as well. In fact, if you don't have it already, Darla, I believe, has them for you. 
We've talked in the past, and I know I've talked to you individually, about coming and asking us for information. If you get a packet and you need additional information, don't hesitate at all to ask staff for that additional information. It can help your fellow commissioners. It also helps us better prepare when we submit packets to you. Uh, one of the best things you can do is give us a call and ask to come down and sit down with us. We will be happy to do that individually. Uh, we can't meet with you in a larger group outside of a public meeting. Um, those of you who have attended the um, open meeting law class yesterday would have a clear picture of that. Those who are attending today will get a clear picture of that. Uh, but one of the things that we want to do is make sure that you understand part of our job as the planners for the city of Prescott is to provide you the information you need to make your recommendations to council. So don't hesitate to ask us for anything you need in order to do that. And welcome aboard to the new folks here. So if you have any other questions, let me know. No comment. Thank you for bringing back the full size site. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry we did have a conversation trip. about that last meeting, so I we think did. we have a clear understanding on both sides. Uh, George? Okay, thank you. I, I'd like to also personally uh, welcome our, our new commissioners. We're missing one uh, already today, but uh, I've been on this commission for, I don't know, eight years, six years, something. And uh, it's nice to have qualified individuals up here who look at real estate from a different perspective and a compliance perspective and a community perspective. So good job on your choices. Thank you. Yep. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Matt, do you have a preference for, uh, since we didn't have donuts today, what kind of donuts that we should bring for next? What happened to the cookies, darling? John is the one who made the special trip over. John, do you have any preference? Just don't. I, like, I, I like a maple glaze. Ooh. Oh, okay, yeah. Not with the bacon on them that they have over here. Like you like that bacon? Okay. Okay, any other announcements? Okay, meeting's adjourned.